Here, Sarah. Here. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, one God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I need a motion for the consent agenda. Motion. A motion and a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Public input to some time, please. For discussion items not already on the agenda with a time limit of three minutes each. This will be you, I'm not even going to butcher your name. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's phonetics, just like it's, not, just like it's spelled. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight. My name is Coleman Silburn Eagle. Uh, I'm from Vinton, and I'm running for State Senate. Thank you for the opportunity to introduce myself and to answer any questions that you may have. I grew up on a dairy farm uh, where my parents taught me how to work. Whether it was stacking bales in a 110 degree hay mow, feeding calves, or picking rocks, there was always work to do. And it didn't get done unless somebody did it. Uh, after high school, I earned a degree in history from St. John's University and a commission in the United States Army. My time in the military reinforced those values that my parents had taught me. Hard work, accountability, and dedication. I deployed to Afghanistan in 2012 as a route clearance platoon leader which meant that my men and I were responsible for patrolling the roads looking for improvised explosive devices. Hardly what you'd call a safe job, but by the grace of God, we all made it home safely. I finished my military service in 2019 as a captain, and I now work remotely as a data analyst for one of the largest healthcare companies in the world. I'm running for state senate because I'm a dad. I have two boys, five and two. Uh, the oldest, it's actually his birthday today. We were just at Pizza Ranch for his birthday supper. Apparently they make the best cheese pizza around. Uh, but he's in, he's in preschool, and so I know how important education is. We need to continue making the historic investments that we've made in Iowa students. We're fortunate enough in Vinton to have good schools, and I'm sure the same is true here in Lisbon. But that's not true for everybody, and no student should be stuck going to a subpar school. I'm running for state senate because I love small towns. Uh, when I was in the military, I moved a lot, five states in seven years. And while that was challenging, it also exposed me to some different ways of doing things. In Kansas, there's a program called Red Tiger, which is a portmanteau of redefining retirement. It's run through the University of Kansas, and it seeks to pair graduates with small town business owners who don't have identified successors. As we know probably all too well, when a small town business closes, that can have a devastating impact on the town. So a program like Red Tiger can pair graduates, give them jobs, with retirees, allow them to retire, and the small town can continue to thrive with the economic impact of that business. I'm running for state senate out of a duty to service. As I mentioned, I served my country in the military. At every stop along the way, though I moved a lot, it didn't matter how short the time was, I always found time to volunteer with the community, whether that was the Knights of Columbus, Kiwanis, or some other group, giving to the community was of the utmost importance. Vinton was no different. Uh, within two weeks, I was involved in the, the Vinton Kiwanis Club and an officer in the Knights of Columbus group and continued to serve my, my parish as the, a member of the parish council. Uh, if the voters of Iowa will agree, I hope to continue that service in Des Moines as a state senator. Um, out of respect for the rest of the agenda, I'll link things here. Uh, if you'd like to learn more, you can visit my website, colmania.com, colmania.com, C-O-L-M-A-N-I-A.com. Um, thank you so much. Oh, you have any questions that you might have? Any questions for us? I can relate. I grew up in a dairy farm. I know the hard work that you did. So I, I absolutely know. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you for your service. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Uh, if I have a Lisbon Historical Preservation Summary, a certified local government annual report. Becky is on, and she will have that. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Um, Ann wrote to the South and I was reading it for because she couldn't be here tonight. Okay. Uh, the Lisbon City Council entered into an agreement with the National Park Service and the state of Iowa to become a certified local government 31 years ago, creating the Lisbon Historic Preservation Commission and committing to supporting the LHBC and local preservation efforts. CLGs are required to submit an annual report to the state and required to give a summary of its annual report to the city council at a public meeting. 
We use our goals and action plans to set the course for the year and to keep us focused on our mission. Our accomplishments for 2021 include the release of a new video titled Save, titled, Save Our Buildings, Save Ourselves that advocates for preserving downtown buildings. The video is narrated by Lisbon alum Silas Young using a portion of a preservationist Jeff Siegler's blog. Um, this is the video, Christina, if you want to show them. of an army of little old ladies in white sneakers chaining themselves to a house museum. I don't entirely understand why some people look upon the concept of preservation with contempt. No one has a negative opinion of uh, restoring and maintaining old cars. <clears throat> Most understand that a classic car has an intrinsic value that's worth protecting, that the quality of craftsmanship, the retro style, and the scarcity of the item all bring about a significant value, a value worth protecting because the item can't be recreated. Downtown is, in essence, a public gathering place, space that is defined by a collection of compatible structures. And when those structures decline, of course, the space thereby declines. In real world terms, the story goes a little something like this. Someone in the community decided they needed a structure to house their business. So, they invested money in constructing a building. The building is designed to house their business, possibly the residents, and will likely be associated with their name. So it was important to make sure that the building was well built. And this is how downtowns begin. The owners derived an income from the buildings, and in turn used some of that money to maintain the building. And then, boom, that's Main Street economy. A downtown can weather a building or two no longer being maintained. But when it becomes one quarter or one third, the possibilities are bleak. And so the downward spiral begins. Buildings deteriorate and quality businesses depart. And before long, downtown is full of deteriorating buildings and poorly conceived businesses that seek out cheap, low-quality spaces. Winston Churchill once said, we shape our buildings, thereafter they shape us. Why did the world mourn when Notre Dame burned? Why do we travel across countries and oceans just to see a building? Why do we use iconic buildings as city logos and in so much of our media? is because we understand that these places matter, and we identify with them. We understand that these buildings we shaped are now shaping us. We have all experienced an emotional impact by the feeling of a breathtaking place. Every one of us has entered a room that was designed in such a way that it alters our very mood. Buildings can bring about feelings of awe, of inspiration, of creativity and even pride. And all of this is to say that our buildings have an impact on us, both positively and negatively. When we visit a well-maintained historic district, it delights us, it, it inspires us, and it makes us joyful. When we visit a dilapidated, depressed place, however, it in turn depresses us. Historic downtowns are the single largest investment most cities will ever make. They are a reflection of the community as a whole and the center of commerce. Preservation isn't just about saving our buildings. It's also about saving our cities. And in turn, it's about saving ourselves. Thank you. Very nice. That all started with a, 
a project with the, um, the high school um, to put that together. I'll go on with our accomplishments to include. Number one, the Myers Farmstead Historic District was designated the National Register of Historic Places in February of 21. We did our best to determine a course of action to take on the barns in the Myers Farmstead Historic District after damage from the 2020 derecho. An unexpected outcome of our efforts to save the barns was Commissioner of Mount Vernon Lisbon Poet Laureate Amelia Kidney's poem titled The Hunchback of the Barns. Kidney is collaborating with photographer Bob Campania on a book project, and Kidney's poem and photos of the barns in the Myers Farmstead will be included in that book. The poem and barn photos were made into a poster that was displayed during sauerkraut days and distributed widely on social media. We continue our efforts to stabilize and improve the appearance of buildings in the Main Street Historic District by working with the city to complete phase one of the preservation plans for the History Center and library buildings. We assisted the History Center Foundation and the Friends of the Lisbon Public Library with grant applications to help with the cost of phase one repairs to both of the buildings. The Lynn County Historic Preservation Commission awarded $2,400 to the History Center Foundation, about half of the cost of phase one. They, they also gave $4,000 to the Friends of the Lisbon Public Library, which covered about one-fourth of the cost of phase one for that building. Next, we also assisted the History Center Foundation with a grant application to the Lynn County Community Economic Development Program to help with lead paint abatement on the west wall of the History Center, which is included in Phase 2 of the preservation plan for this building. The county awarded $19,000, which will cover about two-thirds of the cost of removing the lead paint. Destination and Trailblazer signs were installed on Highway 30, Highway 1, and Business 30, directing travelers to the Lisbon Main Street Historic District. Installation of these signs helped to attract visitors and prospective residents and businesses to our community. We continue our consulting role for the city's downtown reinvestment program. Only two applications were received in 21. We are appreciative of the Council's continued commitment to this program and would like to discuss ways to better promote the program. Our annual education outreach event in celebration of National Historic Preservation Month was held in person this year with Commissioner Kibbe working with the third grade students on a mapping activity that included the students building the town of Lisbon by placing photos of homes and buildings on a blank map of the town in the order in which the structures were built. The students also reviewed a video walking tour of the Main Street Historic District that was produced by the Cedar Rapids History Center. 2021 marked the 11th year of their work with the school on a special activity like this. We continued our efforts to advocate for preservation and educate others on our purpose. We have done this by expanding our website and our social media presence. The number of members of our Facebook page doubled during 2021. We also have a good relationship with the Seven newspaper and have received good media coverage over this past year. This past year, we also worked with the owners of a couple of private residences who had questions for us about caring for their properties. We continue to reach out to other organizations in order to accomplish our goals. In 21, we created a new partnership with the Silos and Smokestacks National Heritage Organization in connection with our plans to preserve the Barnes and Myers Farmstead Historic District. We will discuss ideas for the future use of the buildings and the development of the nature park. We also made a connection with the IOFAR Foundation. Our missions are very similar and there may be ways we can work together, especially on tourism efforts. At the county level, LHPC has been involved in discussions relating to the placement of a large Lincoln Highway map that sits in the entrance of the History Center. A large interpretive sign that will be installed in Lincoln Square, hopefully. At the state level, all members of our commission participated in the Preserve Iowa Summit this past June. In addition, we worked closely with the state's historic preservation office as we pursued a course of action on the damaged barns in the Myers Farmstead Historic District. 
At the national level, two of our members participated in the summer short course sponsored by the National Alliance of Preservation Commissions. 21 was a busy year for us. We started tracking our volunteer hours in June in the event those hours could be used for a grant match. From June through December, the five of us on the our commission logged in over 256 hours. While we sometimes react to whatever's in front of us, planning for the future is where we focus our primary efforts. We are almost always looking six to 12 months, months ahead. This is especially true of our efforts to secure grant funding for our project, which allows us to think big and bold and take advantage of the many grant opportunities that will allow us to improve our community without overburdening the taxpayers. We appreciate and encourage we appreciate the support and encouragement for our efforts by the mayor and city council, and especially the active engagement of our city council liaison, John Hartzell. Any questions for Becky? Thank you guys very much for the presentation, Becky. Thank you. Thanks, you guys. Keep up the good work. Well, we will. We can't help it. Question and possible action in reference to repairs of History Center and Library. Becky is on and she can discuss that. Becky? Okay. okay. You got me now? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So we're looking at phase one, I mean phase two of the library and the history center. Um, the History Center is the big ticket item this time around. Um, the library, it looks like we've got enough left in the budget for the library to do um, all the upper windows. There's, um, they all need to be repainted and glazed and resealed and that sort of thing. And um, it, it looks like, and we don't have absolute numbers now because we had numbers, but now we're talking to a local painter to do that work, to try to keep the work local. Um, but it looks like that should all work out to where it's in their, in their budget for what's left in this, this fiscal year's budget to take care of that. Um, then they would do more painting on the, the front storefront on the street level, um, and that would come out of the next year's budget. Uh, for the History Center, different story. <laughs> um, we did get the $19,000 grant uh, towards um, taking the lead paint off the building. Then we'll know a whole lot more about what kind of shape the brick is in underneath that. But um, we've um, been talking to another company about uh, uh, doing larger guttering on the back of the building on the north end um, that would help keep the, the um, any water damage getting into the brick on the building um, in the tops of the parapet wall to make sure no water is seeping in there and Brandon said that he had someone looking at the flashing on the back of the parapet wall and that's looking good so that's great news um, what comes after that is working on all the brick. There's a couple of really bad spots. They'll do some, they'll be um, caulking the waterproofing along the, uh, where the sidewalk meets the, the, um, the foundation, that sort of thing. There's going to be a lot of brick work to be done. We have no idea at that point if we'll have to repaint it. If it's going, you know, if it's just in that bad a shape, we're, we've got our fingers crossed that we'll be able to leave it brick and just put a clear sealer on it. Um, that is going to come to around, uh, we've got $88,000 to take care of all of that. That's what we're coming up with numbers. We've got a bids, bids in from BSM. Um, then Ann and I plan on working on a um, on a grant that could get that could get a third of that covered, and so we're so we're, we've been working close with Brandon, juggling numbers and trying to figure out if we can get this done, and we're gonna 
so that that building is stabilized. Do you have anything else to add, Brandon? Or anybody else have questions? I don't think so. I think that's about it. We're meeting uh, with BSM on Wednesday at 2 o'clock to talk to them about uh, when they can get started and some of the techniques and stuff that they'll be using. Because there, there, is, there is one tricky part is that um, the, the grant to get the, the um, paint removed expires at the end of this fiscal year. And so we don't know if we'll have the other grant, the bigger grant, to do the brick work until after July 1st. And so, you know, so we're on, I'm on tins and needles. Everybody else seems pretty calm about it. But I don't want to leave the brick exposed if we can't get that grant to fix those bricks. And yet we don't want to lose that $19,000. So we want to go ahead and get the lead paint off. So we can see what we're looking at for one thing, and we've got nineteen thousand dollars to help us. So I'm a little nervous about whether we're, you know, grants are really competitive, especially after all the buildings that got damaged in the derecho. It's, you know, people are really asking for money a lot to help them. So that's got me nervous. Brandon doesn't seem to be as nervous as me. So you're you're saying it's going to cost eighty-eight thousand dollars for the poll for everything? For everything for the history center. And, and that's you're, that's you're, including that the paint removal and everything. So you're and talking it, you could maybe get a grant for a third of it? Right. Is that a third plus the nineteen thousand? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it would be a different grant. Yeah. I talked to Becky a little while ago, um, kind of the rough approximate number and I put it in your packet, it's 101,000 is what we're dealing with for the funds remaining for this fiscal year and what we have um, budgeted for next fiscal year for both the library and the history center. And one thing to add is the Friends of the Library is also going to be seeking a grant for repainting uh, the front entryway um, up above there and then the uh, fire escape, that will be also for next year, is that right Becky, FY23 I believe. Yes. Uh, I'm going to have that all wrong. Yes, you are right. <laughs> Never mind. I'm talking, thinking out loud. Right, so, um, if, you know, so they're, they're going to be trying to get grant money to help with that, too. And, um, and we'll keep looking for grant money, too. Becky, with the 88000 that would be remaining, does that give an extra wiggle room in case something else comes up that needs to be done to the yeah. history center that possibly well, we are not aware of? Um, when BSM, when BSM um, bid the, the brickwork, and you know, it's hard because you don't, well, because you can't see under that, the That's paint. why I'm asking. That's the exact reason and, why I'm asking. Is right. So he, he tried to bid it the worst case scenario without going crazy. Think I think we've got I think we've got it covered. I I feel pretty good about that. Yeah, I think today is on the the contract we had up there today. I believe that the capstones and the flashing wasn't that a fourteen thousand dollar bill that we were projecting and with that in better shape than that it should come in way under that so that should help as well I think it was 14,056 Becky if you find that number I'm looking here real quick it says at the top, of one, top of one of the pages I believe oh We have on some of that. Like we didn't have well, I guess we had what was it five thousand for the gutters, something like that, four thousand. Correct. And he only had like a thousand for the for the flashing. He had eight fifty or something like that. I don't know what the 14 was. I'm trying to look here. 
Then it all goes into the masonry. Um, <laughs> what we what we are um, possibly leaving out for this for this next round is is the ceiling of the bricks um, after they're all fixed is um, you know if, so that's something that we can kind of play with we could leave those until the following we could leave that without sealing right away we could seal them the following year you know get grants to do that. And possibly still get a grant, maybe through Wynn County, to do to help do that sooner. So we've got a lot of things where we can, you know, not do something or cut back on something. And if something else goes way over, we're trying to leave ourselves wiggle room to do that. Because our main thing is to get the bridge stabilized. And as for the library, you guys have the there, there's funds there to do that. Did you go yes. Do we have quotes from the local owner? Um, um, no. Kind of I'm going to be getting quotes from him in the next couple of days here. Okay. But we had quotes looking at what BSM gave us, and so we knew we had enough to do it from those numbers. And we're assuming that this guy isn't going to be that much different. Maybe a little bit less because he's local, doesn't have the travel time and such. The thought with that, Becky, was the DSM was not able to do that, so they were going to contact a local painter anyway, and then we were trying to alleviate the upcharge that they would charge because of that. So trying right. to save money. Right, right. As a general contractor, they would just put a percentage on to be, you know, handling <clears throat> them. Right. So, so we would at least have that percentage to back out of it. So the library is in, in, in good shape, and then if they're just doing some more painting next year, or next, you know, starting in July, then, then then there would be money left over in that. Like, like Brandon said, there's 101 between the two buildings, and the library won't be using that much of it. So they would have some left over that we could move over to the history center to help get that done. Anybody else? Questions? Keep up the good work. Thank you. Um, thank you, Becky. Thanks. So, I mean, it looks like, you know, Becky gets, they got the $19,000 one, and then if they get a third, that's approximately $24,000. Um, so, you're looking at $48,000 just from them there. So, you said you got 101 yeah, that's about approximately what we need. Um, the main thing is going to be after we get the bid from the um, contractor. One thing to mention is there's also been some wind damage to the roof of the History Center. Um, that was originally why the contractor came out this week. So that's going to be factored into this 101 as well because it's building maintenance. So um, I don't think it's terrible, but um, he is going to send a quote for that. So there's going to be a gutter quote. Uh, the recaulking of the capstones is a quote, which is part of the phase two, um, as I said, the gutter, and then this roof damage, which we'll have to see what that is, but um, it's up in the, the lower part of that roof at the south southeast corner where it meets the tall point. So um, once we have all these numbers, like I said, we're meeting with BSM on Wednesday. I'm hoping by the end of the week we'll have all the numbers, and then at the next meeting we can come to you with uh, kind of a plan. Is that right, Becky? Yeah, that's that's our goal. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Presentation of fiscal year 21 financial audit. All right, so um, I presented that. You should have all had that in your packet. Um, I'll just kind of go through the some of the findings that they had here. Uh, as I put my notes, um, they were uh, uh, pretty pleased with things. Obviously, there's three administrators that um, dealt with this budget um, with COVID and derecho and all that. So uh, the first thing, segregation of duties. You've probably heard of this before. It's on every audit. Uh, the reason that's on here is because there's only three people in the office and there's so many duties and they try to make sure everything gets uh, 
um, its own task uh, with each person. Obviously, that's why two people sign the checks and that type of stuff. So there's really no way to uh, to do that. As you can see, we'll continue to review and monitor and improve that um, where possible, and they've accepted that response. Um, certified budget dis uh, disbursements. I think every community in at least the Highway 30 corridor is going to have this this year. Uh, it's because we spent all the funds for Duratio prior to doing a budget amendment to do so. Well, it's a disaster, so there's not much, no way around that. Um, obviously, the, the recommendation is going to be that uh, we'll amend the, the funds prior to, to use, and they've accepted that as well. Um, some of the other ones are um, some of the account balances. Um, as you've been aware, we've done a couple of transfers this last uh, two meetings. These are all part of that. Uh, the auditor um, gave us some suggestions on how to move some funds around to, to help with that. Um, and some of the housing rehab has been put off because of uh, high construction costs and because of COVID. So that's why that one's that way. And the sports complex is the intergovernmental loan that we we pay to ourselves. So that is going to be a negative because we're paying it back. And as you recall, 23 is the last year for that payment. So that'll be <coughs> all right. Um, and then the last one was also a part of the last um, audit last year. Um, that $6,000 we give Mount Vernon for Joe Jennison, they just... Um, they like to see a public purpose for it. Um, while we think it's a great idea to do it, um, they just like to see more track, more tracking, and more what what's used with those funds. It was on here before. Um, you know, we said we'll continue to evaluate. They didn't really have an answer for how we can do it better. Um, but I noticed that it was on last year's audit as well. Uh, we do the same thing with Southeast Lynn, as I mentioned. That doesn't seem to get flagged, so. Um, we can continue to work with them to try to figure out a way to what would appease that that money going that direction. So, if anybody has any questions or anything, you should have the entire um, audit with you. Um, I also have a hard copy here if anybody at any time wants to come take a look. It was my first one, so. We got any questions? Some of the benefits are tourism and investments back into the community. Yeah, no, he didn't question that. It's just they have their way, their processes of it makes it look like we're just giving the city of Mount Vernon 6000 and they they just, it's just a flag and it was a yeah. flag last time too. So we'll continue to work with them to how to. We've been, <coughs> we've been doing that for years though. Yeah. But, yeah. It's, this has been a flag every year? I know it was in the last one. We, we, Christine and I both looked at the last one and it was on there and we asked them about it and they, they just, it's a, I don't know, we said we'd just continue to work to see how to, how to mitigate that. Because I mean, sure Mount Vernon kicks in more than we do for the same, very same purpose. Correct. Yeah. Like I said, we, we, we you know, we give that money well, to the sour There's property. brochures, there's the signage, there's yeah. several things that come from it. Um, mm -hmm. And we can bring those it's almost like and make them it's almost them. like they're they want like more itemization of what we get in return to show. But the what do we actually get in return from Great question. the CDG? Because well, we're you're I, bringing the brochures that go out to the right. But I mean, we're giving six thousand dollars to Mount Vernon, and I think Joe brought us some cleaning supplies for the city one time this year. Well, That's I guess. We can print our own stuff. I mean, we can we can do a lot of that. My biggest concern is, what are they doing for the town of Lisbon? We are off. We are off the map. And so my biggest thing is, we need to get back on the map, and we need to bring people in here, and for a reason. And if that is pulling in them to help us, they would. You would think we work together. They would want to help us. It would, it would cost a lot more if we tried to do it by ourselves. Because they print all these brochures that go out to the uh, state centers uh, along the interstates and such. And so we're mentioned in those. Um, 
they did have the uh, grants they gave because of COVID. But I, what I'm trying to say is they do Chuck Block and Mount Vernon. They, they put on oh, all yeah. of these events. Yeah. What Are there any events that they put on here for us that will bring outsiders in and bring outside dollars into the town of Lisbon? That's my biggest thing. Yeah. I would think it would be a good idea to have Joe come and answer that question. There you go. You can do that. But it sparked by the, you know, by the mentioning on the audit and so forth. And I think, yeah, and that's what we can tell them. Like, look, this isn't our audit. We, we need to know what can we have some itemization of where is that, where is that money going? That's been a big concern of mine for the last year, seeing that Mount Vernon continuously has all of these events and they're the ones putting it on. I understand Mount Vernon probably gives them a lot, a, a lot more money than we do, but we're not getting really anything. Like, I think they, he brought us cleaning supplies. I know for my sake he does donate 500 for uh, Halloween Town every year. Um, we haven't had it for the last couple of years, obviously. Right. That's part of it. A lot of some of those events are not CDG related. Not all of them. Not all of them. But that, I know they, they donate money towards it. It'd be good for him to specify yes. that with you guys yeah. as well. Yeah. Absolutely. John, did they give our prep days funds? You know, I, I couldn't tell you. Uh, Sauerkraut days is pretty much independent from CDG. Where Heritage Days is a CDG uh, event now. They've taken it over. Uh, CDG has in the recent last couple of years. I do know they did the deeds app. I know they paid mm -hmm. for that service. I don't know how much that was, but um, I know they paid for that for both cities for a year. I think that's coming up here probably about right now. Um, but yeah, I can have Joe come over and... I imagine they have, they have financial records with you, right? Sure. So, yeah. Let's see where the money's going. The main thing is they have all the retail over there compared to we have very little in our downtown. And they probably, oh, I don't know how much more it is. More reasons for us to grow, right? Like, that's the, that's the whole purpose. That's between, they give, Mount Vernon gives them, I think it's probably between 10 and 20 times more than we give. No, I, no, I, I completely understand that. And that, I mean, they're a bigger community than us. Yeah, but, but they, they have motel, hotel packs, mm -hmm. and they have the hotel over there. That's a big difference too. So it's kind of hard to compare communities. A lot of differences. Yeah, good old Joe. Oh, I'm doing it. Absolutely. But, uh, Thank you. The economic development part we do meet over here for that, and uh, that includes uh, both communities on vacancies, uh, things for lease, things for rent, and the business community. Um, yeah, it kind of caught me off guard here. Think of all those things, but there's a lot that uh, they've been involved in. Okay, let's move on. Yeah. Um, so, public hearing for phase one of sports complex. I talked to Lisa uh, YTT, um, and I'm still checking on this because I know that we had a public hearing previously to uh, um, set the funds aside. So, um, I'm assuming that the council would want some sort of public input on the new design uh, using 3rd Avenue. So I would like to make that for March 14th. Um, she's going to be here next council meeting on the 28th. She'll present uh, the 3rd Avenue extension along with the cost opinion and then um, answer any questions that you have. Kind of give you two weeks to look it over. We'll get it posted out here, put it on the website and then uh, make a decision, hopefully, to go out to bid on the 14th. You guys are willing to do that. Do you have a motion? So I make a motion to set the public hearing for March 14th. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Correspondence. I do not have any tonight. City Engineer Report. He has, uh, he's not here tonight. Um, he has no update. Uh, he's still, uh, we are still waiting on, uh, 
CDBG um, referenced the grants for the water project. All of the surveys are done. Uh, they sent us back 30 surveys, which we needed 27 to be complete, over and above what we had before. Those are done. We did post them online. There was some question from some citizens. These weren't a survey as to, this was an income survey. It wasn't what we want to see in Lisbon. It was just a, a survey. They picked the random addresses that these had to go to as their system for as part of this uh, grant. Um, so it was all done by CDBG. <coughs> we just um, had to get the numbers and get them back to them. So that is in and complete. I was actually talking with them today. There is a, a new rep from uh, CDBG that I'm working with. So hopefully at the next meeting we'll have uh, some sort of uh, determination with that. Uh, he's still waiting for the DNR on the well, and there has not been any new bids posted for resurfacing projects in the area. He's hoping uh, in the next month or so, but kind of is what it is until then. Do you know what Mount Vernon's going to do theirs? It's all going to be dependent on the price, but um, they're definitely going to get a bid when we get a bid, is my understanding. That's it. For public, public works. Uh, not a lot. Um, we know we got the Mixel and Facebook post. We did have a water rain break on Saturday morning, early morning. Um, relatively uneventful. We didn't have to break up any of the street to get it fixed. It was in the parking area, so that went pretty smooth, considering. Um, I'm sure you guys have all heard. Boy, if not seen, the lights were replacing downtown. Um, the, the ballasts are obsolete for those lights, and you can't get those anymore, so you have to update to the LEDs if you want. Otherwise, you can spend a fortune special ordering one to try to retrofit this. Uh, so that's talking to Brandon. I think he talked to Doug. You guys looked after we put a couple test ones in there. Um, we got four more of them today and we should get the rest of them here by Tuesday, I think next Tuesday, they thought, and we can have them all switched out. I think they look great. I do too. No, we actually the electric one more light. Those directly. Yeah. So this will save us a little bit. It, no, it should save us, and Christina and has been working with the Lion trying to get us that rebate. Oh, cool. So we, we didn't hear back right today. So we're hoping at some sort we can get some sort of cost back from that too. I can't speak for them, but I think this goes along the same lines as you'll notice some of the lights, street lights in town are yellow and some are white. I think that's Alliance running into the same issue. So just FYI, I'm sure at some point in time they're all going to be white. So. I think it just gives it a crisper look. I think it's a lot clearer. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Those orange or yellowish, it just looked dungy. Like you drive through it, it's like a little eerie almost. I get it at Halloween time. Yeah. They look great. <laughs> well, I think they did a protest. They like the yellow. They said it's moved. Oh, yeah. Is that it? Yeah. 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 Spring soccer registration started today. They will go until Friday, March 11th, um, grades pre-K through 6th grade. Um, that will start at the end of March into early April. Um, I've been working on a match grant from the Walmart Foundation um, with the help of Brandon and Amanda Thighs. I've been working on that for the last couple weeks. Um, that's a $100,000 grant. That will go towards the sports complex, and I don't know if you remember when we would hear anything back off the top of your head, I, I don't remember. It's got to be submitted by the 16th, so coming up in the next few days, so we're wrapping it up, um, and then we'll hear back. Um, I think it was within like six to eight months after that, so. Um, and then I'm also working on my coaching authorization right now, and I'm about 30% done with that, so that's about all i got going on. That's awesome. Question on the park. Um, you know, a, a week of weather change could really make a difference on the ground out there. When are the bubbles going out? The lights? 
Do we know yet? I have talked to our electrician. Um, he's got a trench, the uh, daisy chain, the lights all together. So he's got to wait for the majority of the frost to get out of the ground to do that. Our target date is to be completed by May 1st. That is what I've told the electrician I want to have done. And I'll say it here on record so everybody knows. Um, but that is the goal. Uh, I was just concerned about ruts or something and then you haven't received. And well, thankfully, most of this is going to be done from outside of the fence. So um, it may get a little tricky on Bunning Field, but we're thinking we can get to most areas from outside the fence, playing field area. So, yeah, there's probably going to be some ruts on the outside. We'll have to deal with that. But um, And then the other important thing is the old ones will not come down until we know the new ones are up and working. There's that too, so. Anything else, Burton? No. Please, Burton. Anything, uh, nothing additional from the police department for the police report. You should have that in your packet as well. Any questions related to anything from there that you'd like to discuss? Very good. Um, again, if we're working on our annual report, we're hoping to have that to you by next month as well. So it'll be, we're changing obviously a good reason to change it up because it's the first year of a merged department and so change it up the format to make sure we get the same data so hopefully next council meeting or the one after that will have the annual report to you as well as we go the second thing i wanted to follow up with i sent uh, each of you a letter today um, that i drafted and have talked with brandon numerous times about the complaint that was alleged uh, or that was presented at the council meeting on january 24th um, where Councilperson Scott said that a uh, member of the police department screamed at a church group uh, related to snow removal issues. And uh, as you remember from that council meeting, hopefully you remember uh, my question, the screamed at portion of that uh, conversation uh, was informed that it was going to get followed up on or he followed up with me after the meeting from that standpoint. Um, I waited until February 11th, had not heard from uh, Councilperson Scott. I reached out and contacted him. And before that, I opened an investigation into this. It's a complaint that's alleged against the police department in a public setting. Um, I take complaints verbally, written, email, phone. It doesn't matter. However the complaints come in, we take those and we take those serious and we look at it. I conducted an investigation into this uh, incident and was able to confirm as part of that investigation um, it did not happen in, in that manner. There was a conversation between an officer and a family member of Councilperson Scott's about snow removal and blowing snow into the street. Um, it was a very respectful and very calm conversation, and the and the relative agreed that he was going to push the snow right back as soon as he was snow blowing, and then curb it back as soon as it was done. That was the end of the conversation, and the officer drove away. Um, we had been requested by the city. And Streets departments, if we're seeing people doing this, to engage that conversation. Um, and there was a couple other areas that we are aware of where it's occurring that we're trying to make contact with those um, and see what we can do from that standpoint. So as part of that investigation, I talked to the parties. Um, myself or Sergeant Dobbs talked to the parties that were directly involved in the conversation. No one reported screaming. It was a respectful conversation during that time. So. I wanted it for the record from that standpoint. Um, I was disappointed in the way it was presented. I want to encourage any council person, any citizen, anybody in the city of Lisbon who has concerns or complaints that they can contact our office 24 seven. We've always taken those, um, we take those seriously. Obviously public trust is very important in our relationship with the community and, and providing professional police services is what we try to do. So thank you, any questions? Thank you, Beth. Thanks, Thanks for clarifying that and doing a full investigation on that. Ambulance. I uh, do not have anything from him tonight. Fire Chief. Um, two things. Uh, March 12th uh, will be the Fireman <coughs> St. Patrick's Day dance out at the Tin Roof Hideaway, formerly Regal Crown. Um, this year the fundraising will go towards uh, new helmets, um, it's about $9,000. As you're aware, we're getting new gear with the AFG grant, 
So we are also getting new helmets uh, to go along with those. When is it? March 12th. And also, uh, Brothers, if you've noticed, if you've been over there, they do a roundup every month on your change. Um, and next month will be for the fire department. And that money will go towards uh, the shortfalls we get for the helmets and or boots for the firefighters. So uh, that's it, fire. That's I really like how Brothers and Gears does it too. <laughs> Yeah, I think this month is library, John, is that correct? Yeah, it is. <coughs> yeah, our friend's library is uh, Brothers, and next week, it, or next month, it will be at the Aries. I think the ambulance was last month, so. Any questions for our chief? Chief Minister. Uh, a lot of the stuff was covered. Um, one thing on the barns, um, if you've been by there, um, Kurt Blinks is back over working there. Uh, we cleared him a path with the snow so he could get over there and get to work. Uh, he appreciated that. Also, we're going to be hopefully adding temporary power over in that location. Um, it will probably be over by the well, which will be between the southern two barns. Uh, this is going to be for two reasons. One, um, contractor would like some power over there. And the second thing is we need to be running that generator or the well that we're using a generator on now to pump water into that pond. Um, we found out that it's been in the past 24-7 operation on that well to keep that pond up. So um, that's another reason why instead of using the generator, um, we'll be able to do that. So um, hopefully soon a line can get over there and do that. Um, eventually, once the well is placed, we will hopefully in-house run the power over to there um, and have power from to that park there um, once that's done. So will we have to add water to that pond 24-7? Mm -hmm. It sounds like that's been done in the past. That's what the previous owner had advised. Okay. Is that something you want to talk about? I <laughs> it sounds that like could a be quite an expense. Uh, well, what do, you, what, do you, what do you want us to do? I, I, it's, it's like, just ask, if, yeah. is that something we should talk about? Do we, do we, is, that pond, we about is that pond worth it or not? Well, that's... I mean, I don't know. Um, Maybe should I, I, know, I know that it dropped um, last summer. Now, keep in mind, last summer was probably the driest summer we've had in quite a while. Yeah. Um, we were able to run the, the generator. Um, we were basically doing it during work hours. Um, and it brought the level up. Um, but we haven't ran it since, and it's dropped over the winter. Now, again, it's been a dry winter for the most part. So I think it's something we'll just have to see how it goes. Um, obviously, if it's going to be a wet year, that's probably not going to be the case. But um, I mean, we're, I'll do whatever you guys want to do. I, it's just. You know, we have this pond. Well, it would be nice. Is there something we could mix in with that pond so that it would, would retain more water or, you know? So I've talked to the people that did our fish study and the stuff we've got our supplies for over there. And their suggestion was to run the well because they said it's not going to be like the last 12 months have been all the time that we should be able to shut that down and monitor it. Um, the cost to drain and fix would be pretty pricey. And if we weren't have the money, you know, if we didn't have the money sitting aside to do that, that, that could be something you get into and you end up almost reconstructing a whole pond by the time you're done. Okay. Well, something you want to just, once we get it there, we'll try it and see how it how it goes or what you I mean. I guess I like to monitor cost or, or usage of water or, you know, water is pretty important too. But that's not our well, that's, that's not coming out That's a well. That's a person Yeah, yeah. It's a yeah. private yeah. well on that property. So yeah. water's sense free. I mean, it's the electricity, that's right. That's, 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 yeah. that's, that's, yeah. that's the cost. The right. pump. That's yeah. the fee for the pump. But will that hit into the aquifer that we're drilling into? Yeah. We're going a lot deeper with the city well, right? Yeah. <clears throat> we 
We can no. obviously it's going to have its own monitor or meter, so we'll be able to. I mean, we'll just. At this point, I would just suggest monitoring. Yeah. yeah. And I can I can update you as we go. Now, obviously, with the contractor over there using power tools and such, that may factor in too. But we should be able to hopefully get this in place and get it going. Uh, perhaps before he moves to that other barn um, to use that. So I'll I'll just keep you updated on it and go from there. Um, the other thing was, uh, there's two things. Uh, we met with Historic Preservation last week. I think it was Tuesday night. We had a Wednesday night. We had a meeting. Um, and went over what we went over tonight. And then also, I did look into the question about uh, the garbage, uh, us doing the in-house garbage. Um, not, these are just rough numbers. It was approximately one hundred dollars to $200,000 savings over the course of 10 years. So that was ten to $20,000 a year. Um, that did not include getting rid of the garbage, maintenance or wear and tear on the truck, um, and what we would do if that truck was ever down, you know, out of service. So at ten to $20,000 a year, I, I mean, that's, that's up to you guys to make that decision, but I kind of left it right there because I didn't think that was enough to justification to and what I did was I bought, we bought a new truck, it was, what was it, 396000 I believe. One employee with the benefits, um, and then the receptacles. Um, and also that did not include, include uh, recycling, which I know that, I don't know enough about it, but I know that there is some credit that would come back with the recycling, but um, that would not include that service. Does Mechanicsville still do their own? They do. They do their garbage, not their recycling, is my understanding. That's that's what was how it was brought up last month about that. So, uh, if you want me to look into it further, I'd be more than willing to do so. But I just kind of took a high view of it and looked over it. And you know, we got a new we got a new garbage crew. No, I mean it's owned by somebody else. Right, but our contract is still good for the next yeah. five years. No, no price increase. Yeah. Yeah. No price increase through that time. No, um, okay. Yeah. Their name will still be on the trucks for three years, as he reported that at that meeting, um, and he's still the manager. So uh, he didn't believe um, that in the future he would see a, or any reason to have a significant increase, but. Who knows what five years is going to bring? Right, yeah. So, no, I, and I know there is. I, I don't have the contract in front of me, but I know that there is some incremental increases for fuel mm -hmm. that could be added to that from, you know, the original contract. But um, the original company's always given us phenomenal service. Yeah, yeah. I will say though that I was mayor of Conconco or something when we started getting that, and the, the quality of the trucks has improved immensely. So they were buying, you know. Yeah. They, they the reason Lisbon, Lisbon helped them get them. The, well, they had to get the new ones for the, the arm with the, you know. Yeah. The, you, know. Yeah. No, I, I, you still notice the old ones still come through town that pick up the dumpsters. Yeah. So you'll see them come through town. And yeah. they, so they, yeah. they've hung on to them. So um, I think that's it. Unless anybody has any questions or comments. I don't think we need to pursue it at this time, but keep it in mind to contract renewal in case they have to break. Okay. Unfortunately, that just brings our costs up too, though. If their rates are going up, chances are oh, yeah. our costs would go up sure. to, to have it. So there's a reason why they're up in there. So I would still guess their employees don't have the same benefits and wages we do. That's just my speculation. I'm good to stay with you. I mean, so, yeah, you know, I absolutely you figured agree. In, you figured in one employee. I mean, you got to almost figure in two employees because one of that employee's sick. Yeah. Every Thursday, you know. Or well, then we talked about okay, there, no you know, guys, what so. would happen is every Thursday there'd be a snowstorm, and yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah. I, I think it, it would end up more of a headache than it, mm -hmm. at least mm -hmm. in our 
from what I'm thinking. I mean, we do a lot of things in house here um, that I think would take away from that. And, um, well, they only do one thing. They're probably going to do it better than we are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Put it on the job or they do this in five years. Council council report. Nate? I don't have anything this week. Michael? Nothing. Uh, uh, thanks to the historic preservation for all the work they do. When was that meeting on Wednesday? Was that 10 o'clock? I think it was 5 o'clock. You talking last week or this week? This Wednesday's. Uh, 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock. Okay. And thanks for to Doug for taking care of that problem. I thought he did an excellent job. Um, and I've already mentioned the roundup. We share with Gary's, with the uh, Mount Vernon Library, or, yeah, because uh, otherwise he's got customers that said fire. We include it. <laughs> but the uh, Lisbon uh, brothers elected just to give us all the money for that roundup. So that's all I have. Sure. Um, I don't have a whole lot. I love the new lights. I expressed that already. Um, and yes. Thank you to the Historical Preservation. You guys do a lot of work, and that report said a lot. Um, and thank you, Doug, for taking care of the, the issue at hand. That, and thank you for letting us know. Um, appreciate that. And that's all I've got. Okay. Um, uh, Mayor, we had a meeting last Monday at the school. I thought it went really well. She's going to be Pat's successor, right? Yes. <laughs> New principal or superintendent, superintendent. or superintendent over there. She said real nice. Um, thank you, Doug, for taking care of that. Travis, I think Wednesday, Thursday, we're, they're talking rain, ice, snow, something like that. Just letting people in town know we will we'll get out there, just depending on what, hit, what hits us, when it hits us. So we're going to do the rest of these lights down here when they come in. Well, we have the bulbs, replaceable. I mean, everything. I mean, those will be down there for ten years now. <laughs> yeah, I think there's a five-year warranty on these. Oh, the bulbs. Yeah, because it's a bulb uh, fan slash. I mean, it's all self-contained, so you basically take it off and screw in the new one. So, so how much does each of those lights cost? Well, the price, <laughs> the price they told us and the price they put on our our bill were two different. When we were discussing it, it was 107. Then when we got the bill, it was 140 a piece. So we went back today to check on the reorder and talk to them, and they're like, "Yeah, they, they're going to fix that." So. So basically, 140 bucks for 100. 100 bucks a bulb. Yeah. I I had a tremendous. I mean, it was 1,800 dollars is what we originally what we originally figured. So. Uh, I think I just like I said, I think it's a lot better. see down there and I and I think you know when we also put the covers over them for like Halloween town and stuff like that that's gonna, that's gonna be real nice too and with these being brighter I was going to talk to Greg too we'll maybe see him if we can get something festive like that for Christmas time too mm -hmm. because they are bright enough that we could <laughs> did you ever figure out what you can do with those ornaments hanging in the yeah. garage <laughs> not yet we will use them I just gotta figure out where that's it. Anybody got anything? Christina, do you anything? We'll close us on Monday for President's Day. Oh, yeah, all right. Got yeah. <laughs> that it? That's it. All right, meeting adjourned. Thank you.